I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. I really wanted to share this story with you. So I have a LinkedIn account and I rarely use it, but every few months I like to check on it and just see what's up. Just out of habit, I see it on my phone and I'll, I'll click it. So as I'm looking at LinkedIn, I see someone named Danielle Pletka and she is a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute and she's posting on LinkedIn, a place that's usually used, I presume, to talk about jobs and work and networking and things like that, not politics, to post this very uh, politically charged article. Although, as you know, on the Midas Touch Network, I would refer to this type of article as a uh, very fascist article. And this is what she posted. I was surprised to see it. Then I was wondering, what would the comments say? And the comments were so thoughtful and impressive. I really want to just share this dynamic with you and explain to you why I think this case study is very important. So this is what Danielle Pletka writes. She, she wrote this story for the New York Post, this pro DeSantis propaganda. And she writes, she posts this on LinkedIn, mind you, not Twitter, not Facebook, not Instagram. She posts it on LinkedIn. She goes, why is Governor Ron DeSantis asking tough questions about Ukraine? Because one year in, POTUS still hasn't answered critical basic questions. My latest in the New York Post. And then the headline goes on to say, blame bumbling Biden for fading bipartisan backing for Ukraine. Horrific headline, complete Murdoch propaganda. Rupert Murdoch owns the New York Post. He's trying to exalt DeSantis and spread these false narratives. But I was just wondering, how would this play on LinkedIn? And the responses were so thoughtful and so on point in pushing back against the propaganda. And I want to read some of those to you, but I thought it made this really important, important point. You know, I think that, you know, these MAGA Republicans and frankly, the media, you know, and the media likes to always claim, oh, that they're the source and not social media, but they, they very much focus on these narratives that are ultimately created on social media or that the media pushes or that Fox pushes as part of these this disinformation narrative. And they're so incongruent with reality. And I'll just give you a, a few examples. One of the examples is the red wave. The red wave is taking over. The red wave is taking over. Democrats are going to get crushed. Look, it would be one thing if the actual data on the ground suggested that. And there was a point where we had like 40 million early votes. And we here at the Midas Touch Network, we analyzed the early votes and said, wait a minute. The pattern we're seeing is certainly nowhere near a red wave. Now, could a red wave possibly develop? Yeah, but why are all the media looking at these like polls that are of very suspect value when we actually have a data set here? Another example, Chinese spy balloons is kind of a narrative that's pushed by the media um, and it is, you know, kind of first ginned up by Fox in terms of the blame, not its existence, the, the let's blame Biden for it when Biden created an infrastructure to detect Chinese spy balloons. Whereas Donald Trump didn't even have the infrastructure to detect it. So multiple Chinese spy balloons flew over the United States during the Trump administration, which went undetected because Trump was, I guess to use the words of Daniel Pletka here, a bumbling idiot. And he didn't have the wherewithal and have the leadership to build safeguards to even detect it. I think another narrative um, is regarding East Palestine. And the media just pushes the false narrative. It's ginned up by Fox and other right-wing uh, outrage machines. Then you got President Biden who immediately, within hours of the train derailment, 
offered assistance right away. And the Republican governor in a Republican state with a Republican House and a Republican Senate, the company of the where the train was derailed is a Republican donor. Trump was the one who rolled back regulations um, that were in place and stopped the process, the cost benefit analysis that Obama had set in place to improve regulations there. Um, you know, and then you have the media blaming Biden when Biden took all these steps. And there was over 5,100 train derailments during the Trump administration with like close to 30 fatalities. And Trump didn't visit one of them there. And it's this, it's, it's these false narratives that develop. But as I've always said, I think the American people are smarter than that. The American people see through it. And one of the areas where these false narratives also develop is, you know, with Ukraine and President Biden has handled it, not just great, but it's probably one of the biggest foreign policy successes, if it's the biggest foreign policy success of the United States since World War II, and probably the biggest foreign policy success or one of the top foreign policy successes in the history of the United States of America. With all the great stuff Biden is doing domestically by bringing jobs, 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 and having the Infrastructure Act and the Inflation Reduction Act and the CHIPS Act and the PACT Act go on and on and on with domestic stuff. He's united allies across the country. Putin underestimated Biden. And with the resources being provided to Ukraine, Russia's ambitions of taking over nearby countries after Ukraine and eventually Europe have been thwarted because of the help, because of the resources. Yet you have this disinformation chamber and this pro-Putin propaganda. So that brings me ultimately to this LinkedIn story. How would people react? And I think my hypothesis is correct that American people do not like this pro-Putin propaganda. American people do not like the lack of decency, the lack of humanity, the lack of compassion, the hate, the weirdness, the conspiracy theories being spread by MAGA extremists. They don't like that the Republican Party has become a cult of personality of Donald Trump. That's against the values of hardworking Americans. And it was reflected in the comments. So I got to read for you some of these comments um, because they are, again, some of the most thoughtful responses I think that I've read. So let's just start with it. This is James C., who's a franchise contract specialist. This is what he says in response to uh, Daniel Pletka saying, blame bumbling Biden for fading bipartisan backing for Ukraine. James goes, I blame right-wing populism. Plenty on the right simply do not care about defending liberal democracy or grasping the nuances of international affairs and would simply say that money shouldn't be spent anywhere that is not domestic. A segment of the right also has a fetish for Putin as a socially conservative strongman. The fact that so many Republicans cannot simply say, quote, I disagree with Biden on domestic affairs, but think he is doing a good job on Ukraine is a sad state of affairs. The fact that Tucker Carlson has such a voice with the right is also another factor to blame. There is nothing that Biden can do that would get the majority of MAGA types to care about Ukraine. I commend the Romneys of the world, but people with his view are not the majority of the GOP anymore. It was such a thoughtful, brilliant statement. Richard Rosenthal goes, don't blame Biden because Republicans aren't committed to democracy. And then Susan Casey, a communications and government affairs executive says, who cares what the fascists say? Blair Tinkle writes, I'm sitting in the smallest room in my house. I have this print opinion before me. In a moment, it shall be behind me. Howard Gold writes, so the week Joe Biden walked the streets of Kiev with President Zelensky was cheered in Warsaw in a country that gives him an 82% approval rating and met with NATO allies and frontline states to shore up an alliance that, despite its differences, has helped save Ukraine and humiliate Vladimir Putin. You write this incoherent mess of an essay that calls Biden's efforts, quote, bumbling. Either you're so besotted with your failed neoconservative ideology or you are misleading people for partisan political purposes. This is a brilliant, these are some brilliant takedowns. Tony Pouncey writes, 
and he's a sales uh, support specialist at Enverex, right? Biden has not bumbled. The right wingers just want to criticize everything he does just to gain hatred, their biggest mobilization for their support. On the contrary, Biden has made a brilliant statement about Russia and the war. Quote, appetites of the autocrat cannot be appeased. They must be opposed. Autocrats only understand one word. No. Biden said in Warsaw, no, you will not take my country. No, you will not take my freedom. No, you will not take my future. But right wingers are all about taking your freedom and throwing out criticism to gain votes. I mean, there's some brilliant stuff here. That's why I wanted to share this with you. Arthur Viente, our retail and wholesale industry expert, writes, what a poor piece of journalism with markings of a Fox News show than reporting. First of all, DeSantis hasn't demonstrated any propensity for global politics and would be an unmitigated disaster were he ever to be in a position impacting any global policies. Second, blaming Biden ignores the history of our country's efforts to provide some global stability, actions which certainly can be questioned over time, but not mistaken for creating any ambiguity in the U.S. policy with Ukraine. It's pretty simple that you're trying to complicate it as though you have a seat at the table. You don't. The reality is the Republican Party is more aligned with Putin and has done more to prevent support to Ukraine than any other group hands down. And not supporting Ukraine is advocating for support of Putin and the expansion of his fascist autocratic efforts. Rob Wexler, the CEO of National Air Check, writes, A year ago, almost to the day, I said that most on the right would start whining and complaining about us helping Ukraine after a year or so, that it would become political and voila, like magic. Blaming Biden is a deflection from the actual positives he has accomplished and a deflection from anything the right doesn't want to talk about. Again, another very well said and a uh, smart statement. And finally, Keith Fitzgerald, who's a negotiation and conflict management specialist, writes, American nationalism is ugly and the American rights affinity for Vladimir Putin based on the common, quote, values of racism, xenophobia, homophobia, and Islamophobia is shameful. Real Americans stand firmly against fascism, and real Americans stand with Ukraine against Russian aggression. I'm glad you weren't around in the 1930s. Very well said. You know, why I think this is so important to share with you as well is because we all get wrapped up in some social media bubbles and echo chambers sometimes. LinkedIn is just an interesting case study. Like what happens when someone injects this politically charged article in LinkedIn that spreads the kind of propaganda where if you were on Twitter, everyone goes into their echo chamber and fights with each other. But what happens when you just put that in front of a group of professionals um, and you just say, hey, you know, this is how I feel. The pushback though was not just strong, but the wording of that, frankly, all the wording of that was so reflective of the frameworks within which we like to discuss things here on the Midas Touch Network. And it's so great to see that uh, permeating through the national discourse. And it's important and it gave me hope when I read it. And I hope it gives you hope when you read it. And I hope that one of the things you do is you share this video, you share the videos we make here with friends and family and colleagues and coworkers and neighbors, anybody you know, because it is important that the truth gets out there. It is important that these false narratives are confronted with the truth that we're all trying to spread collectively here. And we remind people about the types of things that really make America a very special place. And we remind people how much we all love this country, how much we love the Constitution, and why it's so important that we talk about the issues that truly matter and not get distracted by the right-wing echo chambers. And we focus on building this pro-democracy community together. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 1 million subscribers thanks to your incredible support. So please hit the subscribe button now. Also, check out the Midas Touch podcast wherever you get audio. It's free. Search Midas Touch wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure you subscribe and listen to all of our podcasts on Midas Touch. 
and check out patreon.com slash Midas Touch. If you want to help grow this independent media platform, um, you could go to patreon.com slash Midas Touch. There's different paid memberships there. We don't have outside investors here. So the way we build this is through our patreon.com and that helps build this network and we've got a lot of exclusive content. So check it out. And again, remember to hit the subscribe button now on YouTube as we march to 1 million subscribers in the month of March. I'm Ben Micellis and thank you so much for watching this. Love this video? Then you'll love the Midas Touch podcast. Listen as my brothers and I break down the latest news and chat with top political leaders on the fastest growing pro-democracy podcast in the world. New episodes drop every Tuesday and Friday. Add the Midas Touch podcast right now wherever you listen to your podcasts.